Matthew's sister, Holly Susie, uh, in the house. Uh, today's confession comes from Moz. Thanks, Moz. Simon and team, the following event took place over 56 years ago. Wow. And it's a well-kept secret, not just by myself, but also all the members of my family, including my mother, father, two brothers, and two sisters. Wow. I was around four years old. I don't know what point the cutoff is where you can not be forgiven, but four seems quite young. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> anyway, I was around four, and I was in the same infant class as my twin sister. My other brothers and sister, uh, sisters were also at the same junior and infant school, but in the older classes. This school was a wonderful little school set on the south side of Birmingham. The headmistress at this time was the frightening seven foot four inch tall and four foot wide Brunhilde, a formidable German woman. As per some schools at the time, pets were often in the classes and if you were good, you perhaps were given the responsibility of looking after them, feeding them, cleaning out the cages and so on. <laughs> In our particular class, we had an enormous guinea pig. We called Hercules, and he was a friendly ginger pet, and we all loved him very dearly. Regular confessions, yeah. listeners will yeah. know. <laughs> Where are we going these here? These only end one way. <laughs> yeah. During the summer holidays, when the school was closed, families were vetted to see who would like to take one of the school pets home to look after during the long seven weeks. For some reason, our family had never been selected. Perhaps the fact that Debbie Miles, who lived next door to us, had seen my dad accidentally cycle over their cat's tail <laughs> and deliberately told my form teacher, which didn't help with the selection process. Oh, very good. Well, I was determined that this year we were going to get selected. I did all the usual sucking up to my form teacher and advising my sister also to do the same. I mentioned how much I loved animals and the presenter of an animal program at the time, Johnny Morris. I made sure that I spread lies about other families in contention. <laughs> Oh, they, and good. how they all had vicious guinea pig eating dogs in their houses. <laughs> well, the time came just before the end of term, and my mother was called to see Fraulein Brunhilde and was informed that we had been. Sadly, there's no German for me to oh, say here. Not. Oh. Uh, we'd been chosen to take Hercules home for the summer. There were, of course, strict rules for looking after such a well loved animal. Feeding the right food, cleaning out the hutch and cage regularly. My mother ensured that Hercules would be treated like royalty for, the t for all the time that he was with us. The end of term finally arrived and my dad managed to balance the cage, including Hercules, on the handlebars of his bike, with, with Debbie Miles closely inspecting the tyres for any residue cat tail fur. Anyway, and off we went uh, home. After a couple of days, the novelty of looking after Hercules wore off for my older brothers and sisters, and it was left to just me and my twin sister to take on the role of chief carers. On about day six of the holidays, us twins, age four, I remind you, began to feel sorry for poor Hercules and his boring green diet and plain old water. Also the fact that we'd run out of healthy food for him and we couldn't be bothered to go round to the local co-op to replenish it. So we both decided to improvise and we pulled up just about anything green from the garden and local fields and stuffed it in the front of his of the enormous beast. We also thought that orange squash and melted tip-top popsicles okay. might be a nice change for him and watched in amazement uh, as he chugged on the bottle filled with the new colourful nectar. Do you remember tip-top popsicles? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Holly doesn't. No, no. It was no. basically a nice lolly in a plastic thing. And we, so it would just melt that and put it in the yes. guinea pig. Right. Two days, obviously, it didn't work. Two days later, our mum found uh, poor Her Hercules had gone to the great wheel in the sky. <laughs> Every scrap of evidence of our involvement regarding the new diet was removed. My mum had to contact the fearsome Fraulein Brunhilde. As we did not have a phone, we had to go next door to the Miles house and use there. Much to the light of Debbie, when overhearing of the demise of poor Hercules, my mum, I think, said that it must have been a heart attack due to how much he ate, because <laughs> he was a big old beast. Oddly, Brunhilde was quite sympathetic to what had happened, but insisted that we were to keep him and bring him back to school after the summer holidays so that the other children could say goodbye, pay their respects, and we would have him interred in the school gardens. As we didn't have a fridge or freezer, my dad took him to work and stuffed him out of sight at the back of the works <coughs> freezer. At the start of the new term, we returned to our school with a frozen Hercules in a giant shoebox and a cavernous hole was dug for him. <laughs> we all shuffled past him. Some <laughs> lying in state. Yeah. Some of the girls and boys were crying. I went past and I did the right thing by throwing a nice fresh carrot onto the grave as a mark of respect. 
Please forgive me and my twin sister and the rest of our family for what we did, also depriving other more caring families from looking after poor Hercules. My family hasn't spoken about this story for over 50 years, and it would be nice to remind them all that it was not just down to me and my twin. I suspect that is the sole purpose of this confession. It wasn't just supposed to be me. It was supposed to be all of us. I think that's what you all agree. <laughs> but no, after a couple of days, oh, it was suddenly down to us. So we thought a quick popsicle and the rest of the hay from the neighbouring fields would do nicely. Uh, Sister Holly. Uh, right, well, who put the glad and gladiator Hercules? But they didn't because he died. And he did. they didn't feed him properly. They didn't look after him properly. No. Also, they spread lies. They said that they, that they, you know, they said all these families that they've got these dogs. They're vicious dogs that kill guinea pigs. Yes. It's all lies. And actually, if he had been looked after by those nice families, he may still be with us now to this day. I think so that's unlikely. Really, guinea um, pigs don't live for 60 years. Do they not? I don't believe so, okay. no. Well, I think, uh, yeah, I, I don't forgive at all really so yes you may have been four and and there may sh there should have been really some more parental supervision but still uh moz i'm afraid can't forgive in a court of law you'd get away with it but not this particular court <laughs> no. rather from another uh, i'm going to forgive uh because i mean these guinea pigs they never last the whole i mean how long are the school holidays six weeks never gonna last six weeks is it i mean hercules and we everyone knew at the start of that confession hercules is going to be shuffling off the coil <laughs> pretty true. much uh by the end of this uh confession i love the fact that he was sowing dissent about his neighbours and their dogs in order to win that particular election. I, I think that works well. And I am going to say, what on earth is Brunhilde doing saying you've got to keep hold of the dead gerbil for another six weeks? Yes. That seems ridiculous. Yeah. And they don't even have a freezer. How, how, I mean, the, how, the, the, the children are going to see this rotting corpse? I don't think that works. So for that reason, I'm going to...